Minister for Emergency Services and Corrective Services. Thank you very much indeed, Madam Acting Speaker. Madam Acting Speaker, as I rise to pro make probably my last contribution to the WA Legislative Assembly after nearly 20 years as the member for Coburn. Come March the 13th, 2021, I'll reach the milestone of 20 years as an MP, and on that day, I truly hope to see the re-election of an even larger McGowan Labor government. <laughs> I, instead, I instead will return to normal public life after a parliamentary service, service that included four years as a parliamentary secretary, nearly eight years as a minister under three Labor premiers, and just over eight years as a shadow minister. Along with the membership of various parliamentary committees, I have made 2,549 spoken contributions to this House. <laughs> I've been warned by speakers probably over 100 times. <laughs> and despite my strenuous efforts and obnoxious behaviour, I've never been thrown out. Oh, <laughs> you would. You would. For this anomaly, I must thank the numerous speakers over the years for their tolerance and goodwill. <laughs> uh, not many mem MPs ever get a chance to deliver a valedictory speech due to the turbulent and cycl cyclical nature of modern politics, so I am very, very grateful to be standing here today delivering mine. My gratitude is sincere, heartfelt and genuine to those institutions and people who have allowed me to be their representative in this parliament for so long. Firstly, and most importantly, I thank WA Labor, the party that I've been a member of for over 30 years. I know and I remind colleagues regularly that despite how clever you think you are or how popular you are with your constituents or local groups, it is only the party and its organisational capacity that gets you elected into office. I'm very proud to have been chosen by WA Labor to represent the district of Coburn for 20 years. And I hope that I've returned the party's faith in me by the work I've contributed to both locally and in government. Yeah. My gratitude is also to the local constituents of Coburn, who in five elections returned me to state parliament, mostly with an electorate of over 10 per cent, electorate margin of over 10 per cent, and once uh, being near 20 per cent. I was hoping ever since I announced my forthcoming retirement that my constituents' faith in my work for them and on behalf of them over the years was deserving of their support. But after receiving the hundreds and hundreds of well wishes and thanks from local Coburn residents, over the last month or so, I feel their trust in me has been confirmed. And for this outpouring of for those who voted for me, I feel truly humbled. To the local Coburn ALP <coughs> members who have worked tirelessly over my five electoral campaigns and who are key to success in winning local industrial environmental and lobbying campaigns, I express my sincere gratitude. Members like Phil, Michelle and Hunter Eva, Michelle Dean and the whole Plaza family, Evo and Alenka Radnich, Bart Hewan, Carl Stronman and family, Robert and Jean Bruce, Yaz, Jerry <laughs> and the Mubarakai family, Marco Banovich, Peter Prothero, Les Richardson, Linda Gonsarves and family, and Mick Jurich. All have been rusted on supporters who will always turn out for a local campaign or an election, be it state or federal. I'd also like to express my gratitude and acknowledge my ongoing membership of the Australian Manufacturing Workers Union, a critical workers or representative organisation in WA affiliated to the Labor, WA Labor. It was the AMW members of COVID who pushed me towards the idea of standing for parliament. <coughs> The relationship between my union, WA Labor and the local ALP members in Coburn have been of significant benefit to the creation of jobs and industrial development in the South West Corridor of Perth. The concept of the Australian Marine Complex in Henderson, which I have been deeply involved with from the very beginning, came from the AMWU. Labor policies and Labor in government supported the union idea of a common user facility that is based around three industries with overlapping skill sets shipbuilding and ship repair, both commercial and naval, modular engineering and fabrication for mining and resources, and resources, and oil and gas work, especially subsea. The AMC CUF has now grown into Australia's premier shipbuilding and engineering hub that has generated billions of dollars worth of work for WA, with a state-of-the-art technical college and a workforce measured in the thousands. It just shows that great things can come from the ground up. 
Other people I'd like to express my gratitude and thanks to are my colleagues who I've worked with over the years here in Parliament and in Government. And in particular, I'd like to acknowledge Dr Jeff Gallup and the Honourable Clive Brown, who not only showed honest, true and ethical leadership in politics, but who personally helped me to adjust to being an MP and then a minister. I acknowledge the also the ever-diminishing class of 2001 Labor MPs. With the member for Collie and the speaker leaving with me next year, it, it means if elected there will only be six of our 2001 cohort left when Parliament returns in 2021. It's been a terrific experience working alongside my 2001 colleagues with a variety of ups and downs, good times and sad times. And of course I'd like to acknowledge my current WA Labor colleagues here in Parliament and wish you all the very best in the forthcoming election. I thank and acknowledge also my current ministerial colleagues who have been sensational to work with. Collegiate, dedicated and hard-working, one of the best cabinets ever in WA. <laughs> to Premier McGowan, whilst you've been in Parliament one term longer than I have, we've worked closely together as both parliamentary secretaries, <coughs> committee members and ministers, and it's been a fascinating and a pleasure to see you grow into the leader you are today. You have carried with you into the Premiership all the hallmarks of the really great leadership that I saw in Dr Jeff Gallup. Honesty, smart political but ethical decision making and true humanity towards those less fortunate. Working with and for a leader that you know is in that position for all the right reasons makes it easy to give more, to try harder and achieve and I've had the pleasure to work with successive ALP Premiers who have been just such leaders. I'd like to touch on now some of the things that I've been most proud of that I've, I believe that have made a difference to the lives of people in WA. Over 20 years and two terms of government as a minister means that you've been, you've been involved with many things, some of which relate to implementing party policy and others are just matters that arise and they need resolving. Within the electorate of Coburn, life and the suburbs themselves have changed dramatically since I was elected. Back in 2001, the, sub the suburbs of Coburn actually smelt, and they smelt bad. <laughs> Meatworks, sewage plants, foundries, cement works all gave off really bad odours. <laughs> Locals have got used to the smells, but development was inevitable and complaints grew louder. Today, apart from the odd drift of caustic from, uh, caustic from Alcoa, there are no odours around Coburn. Successive campaigns that I led to fix up Woodman Point sewerage plant, forcing Coburn cement to install baghouse filters and then the moving of the meatworks and foundries have cleaned the place up completely. These changes, along with the massive industrial development at the AMC, Henderson, which I touched on earlier, has transformed Coburn. New estate developments such as Belia that I kicked off as Housing Minister, along with the creation of totally new centres such as Coburn Central and Gateway Shopping Precinct have created a totally new living environment in the southwest corridor of Perth. And can I thank my colleague, the Minister for Transport, Rita Safiotti, for continuing this transformation by picking up on the road congestion campaigns that I ran with the member for Jandicott prior to 2017 and delivering on widening the freeway, building the North Lake Road Bridge, developing Armadale dual carriageway and creating the first east-west metro link from Coburn Central to Thornley. These major infrastructure projects will continue to change the social environment of Coburn and, sound and surrounding suburbs. In government, under Premier Gallup, Premiers Gallup and Carpenter, I held various portfolios and was involved in helping to deliver many amazing projects, such as the design of Perth Arena as Housing and Works Minister, the redevelopment of Broome Power Station, which along with Luma and other Indigenous towns became the first electrical energy plants based on LNG. Along with the wind farms in Hopeton, Geraldton and Augusta, these were some of the 12 new power plants I signed off as Energy Minister. Yet it's some of the small, it is some of the small but life-changing projects that makes public service so meaningful. The delivery of fibre optic cable to the central desert communities of Warburton Kirakara, Blackstone and other remote towns as the Minister for Industry meant that I could help some of WA's most isolated peoples access technologies that are available to the rest of the state. 
As Minister in my current role, I must admit, initially, Premier, I was left aghast at being given corrections and emergency services. After all, what could go wrong in these portfolios? <laughs> I quickly realised, given the shocking state of the departments that I inherited, that the only way was up. <laughs> and there are many good things that could and should be done in reforming these critical areas of government. Reform, however, begins by talking to those you are asking to accept change. I have spent my time uh, during this term travelling the state, visiting every prison and every career fire station numerous times, including meeting with thousands of volunteer emergency services workers encouraging them to embrace change and reform. This approach to doing things differently I put down to my experience as a union organiser and being off the tools where I can talk to people and not down to them. Nearly four years later, our prison and correction facilities in Western Australia are now less crowded, more humane and better staffed than ever before. The shame of WA being the second worst state for the incarceration of Indigenous people is being redeemed through gradual, the gradual reduction of the prison population using smart but effective programs and interventions. Only last week at Baronia Women's Facility I launched an Indigenous Languages program which will be available across all WA prisons. Incarcerated First Peoples and others, such as prison staff, now have an opportunity to learn the world's oldest and WA's original languages as part of a new culturally appropriate rehabilitation process, along with including skin grouping on the offender management computer system so that prisons recognise relations under traditional law and the amazing success of Australia's first alcohol and drug rehabilitation prisons, built and opened in this term of government, WA Corrections has now a completely new approach to prisoner rehabilitation and is world leading in many areas. Today, Western Australia has less children and young people locked up than ever before. Our prison capacity has increased dramatically without the need for building a new prison. We have improved security against the smuggling of drugs and contraband and weeded out more bad officers and staff than previous governments. In concert with the transformational laws and policies introduced by the Attorney-General, such as fine default legislation, FDV offender monitoring, violent and sexual offender legislation and the custody notification system, I am pleased to state that over the term of the McGowan government we have created a safer and more just WA with better policing, secure prisons and greater monitoring of offenders in our community. In achieving these outcomes, can I thank all the extraordinary officers and public servants in the Department of Justice Corrections who, along with the unions, have put in long hours and a massive effort in reforming the agency. And I specifically want to mention to Mr Tony Hassel, who is retiring as Commissioner of Corrections. Without doubt, Tony has been the best commissioner the state has ever had, and we've been lucky to have his wise, humane and capable leadership over the last four years. I wish Tony and Jerry all the very best for their future. Emergency services under the McGowan Labor government is now a modern, holistic agency which can prevent, prevent, prepare for, respond and recover from a wide and diverse range of hazards that may befall the communities of WA. During this term of government, the agency has grown from basically a fire and rescue response organisation to a body that is fully inclusive of career and volunteer emergency service workers, the leading contributor to mitigation action around our towns and vital infrastructure, and the key coordinator of recovery actions following natural or human-induced disasters. The Department of Fire and Emergency Services, under the leadership of Commissioner Darren Clem, has overcome the poor relations that existed between the agency and volunteers under the previous Liberal National Government. The Commissioner and I have travelled over 100,000 kilometres around Western Australia, meeting volunteers from all the emergency services, listening to their views and considering their needs and aspirations. The result of these efforts has been the creation of a more cohesive and unified organisation, with a far greater level of respect for the contributions made by both career officers and volunteers alike. In addition, during this term, we have finalised and implemented the Ferguson Report recommendations, two of the outcomes being the creation of the Rural Fire Division and the building of Australia's first bushfire centre of excellence at Nambila. 
and we have concluded the long running vehicle replacement program that will see all future fire trucks built here in WA, many of which will be constructed in Collie, bringing new jobs and a new industry to the South West. After nearly four years of the McGowan Labor government, emergency services in WA is now better prepared for serious natural, natural disasters, better equipped and better governed. And can I reiterate for one last time, for all those thousands of volunteers across our state, thank you. Thank you for giving up the many, many hours of your time in taking you away from your family and putting your lives at risk to help our fellow citizens in their time of peril. So, the lessons I've learned over the years in government as a minister and parliamentary secretary is, no matter what portfolio you're given, you can not only do good things, but amazing things for the people of WA. You cannot, however, do these things on your own. You're always part of a team and you're reliant on the good people around you. Can I express my sincere thanks to the people who've been around me for the last four years and who I owe such a debt of gratitude to? In particular, I'd like to put on record my thanks to Tom Palmer, my Chief of Staff, Rebecca Martin and Mia Onorato Satari, my Senior Policy Officers, Ryan Emery, Senior Media Officer, Claire Berry, Parliamentary Liaison, liaison Sarah Seymour, Policy Advisor, Tina MacDonald, Executive Officer, Elise Shaw, Appointment Secretary, Susanna Golo and Leah Hay Hayward, Admin and Correspondence Officers. These wonderful people, along with all those who have moved on to pastures new, including you, Ben, up there, are some of the most hard-working, loyal and dedicated staff I have ever encountered. I thank you so much. At the Electra, I couldn't have done my job without the support and help of Phil Eva, Michelle Eva and Michelle Plozer over the years. Organising community campaigns, li liaising with constituents and running a very busy office. These three great hard-working people have been the backbone of Coburn's political representation. Life up here in Parliament is always made easier for MPs due to the fantastic work put in by staff. And I'd like to recognise all the workers here in these buildings. In particular, I'd like to thank the silent and often overlooked Hansard staff who, uh, who make even the most dull, incomprehensible speeches <laughs> readable. <laughs> readable. You are a wonderful group. You know that. <laughs> I specifically mention and thank Lance and Basil, Anthony in the bar, Roger, Mark, Anna, Deb and all the staff in the dining room, Preston the team down in the kitchens who never gets a mention, we all, and who we all owe a great deal to, some more than others, I don't you know. <laughs> Ker Kirsten, Kirsten, Isla, Liz, and Day and all the staff, all the staff of the Legislative Assembly. Sammy and the team down in the gym, who've kept me, who's kept me fit. And by the way, there are still some targets down there on the whiteboard at the gym that need to be overcome, Member, Minister for Health. You still haven't overcome those uh, targets yet. <laughs> um, I'll, leave them, I'll leave them as posterity for the next, uh, for the next government. And, uh, and, uh, the, and of course, the, uh, the wonderful people in Parliament House Education, who sometimes we forget. And finally, Enno and Rob Hunter, who still haven't agreed to expand or put the new equipment in the gym. That's a task for, for you, Minister for Health, in the next government. Even before my arrival in this place, I worked for many years in getting the Labor Party elected at uh, both a state and federal level with terrific officers and staff of the AMWU. Indeed, many people in this chamber, including myself, have only been elected because of the AMWU loyalty and commitment to our party. For this support, I thank my former shop steward, organiser offsider and now State Secretary, Steve McCartney, Glenn McLaren, Pearl Lim and Alex Cassie, Owen Whittle, Whittle, now at Unions WA, Alan, Vince, Maddie, Jade, Simon, Renee and all the other organisers and admin staff, and in particular, the indomitable Andy Giuseppe, who transferred my union membership from the UK to Australia 40 years ago. On a much broader level, of gratitude, can I put on, a record, on the record, as a migrant, my thanks to Australia and the state of Australia for giving, state of Western Australia, for giving me a life that I could only once have dreamed about. The member for Collie and I are hopefully the last of the MPs 
to come to this place from a background of real poverty. We, are, we grew up in conditions only experienced by those of the last century. For Mick, it was a wooden, wooden slab hut near Darken. For me, it was a tiny terrace house south of London with no heating, no, an outdoor toilet and a tin bath. Australia has not just been good to me, it's been a life changer. I've had well-paid jobs as a tradesperson, I've received a sensational higher education at City University, had the most remarkable work life with the AMWU and 20 years as an MP. My experience is unusual for most Australians, but for a POM from my background, well, it's been nothing short of a miracle. And for that, I thank this wonderful country and its people. Mr Speaker, nothing can be done in parliamentary life without the support of friends and family. And I've been lucky enough to have just such support over the last 20 years. Friends who have come to endure my recruitments during elections, such as Terry Riley and Barblett and Don Ingalls, the crazy gastro doctors, Digby, Colin and Lindsay, and surfing mate, Andrew Telford. Family recru recruitments include my brother-in-law, Paul Burnham, and the mother-in-law everyone, everyone should have, because I do no wrong in her eyes. <laughs> Dor <laughs> do I, Doris? No, I don't. Dor Doris Burnham. Finally, I acknowledge that I owe everything to my, uh, my, uh, everything to my long-suffering family. Henry, who's here with Lizzie, thanks for all your love and support, particularly recruiting your mates during elections. Alexandra, who's in London with her husband Angus for her, all her love and unflinching commitment to all of my work in campaigns. And of course, Vivian, the backbone and anchor of our family, whose love and unbelievable hard work has kept us together, focused and loyal to each other. Thank you so much. It would have been impossible without you. And so, Mr Speaker, that's it for the seat of Coburn. It's now over to my colleague, David Scaife, who has been endorsed to run for t in 2021. I wish David and Ellie all the best in their new life in the electorate. A huge, a huge thanks to you, Premier McGowan, my fellow Cabinet Ministers, colleague MPs and all my comrades. It's been an amazing and phenomenal 20-year political life. You can all now breathe a sigh of relief that I won't be around to put forward strange and questionable people for pre-selection anymore. To all, the ALP, to all the ALP members standing in March 2021, work hard, go well, bring back more Labor members to this chamber and continue the fantastic and the historic work of the McGowan Labor Government. Thank you. Yeah.